Science with Dr. Villegas, okay? There you go, thank you. Hello. So, so in, since it's being Men's Awareness Month, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a presentation on preventive healthcare in men. And I'm just, uh, you know, there's so many things I can talk about, but I need to make this brief. Uh, so we're gonna uh, touch on the main points today, okay? So before we begin, let's just go ahead and do a quick show of hands here, all right? Um, what do you guys think the answer is? So the, the number one cause of morbidity in the United States today is um, A, poverty, B, tobacco, C, alcohol, or D, obesity. How, 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 how many of you think it's A? B, C, or D? Okay. So it seems, uh, you know, ev everyone is going for obesity, and, and, and that's close. You know, but the number one uh, cause of, of, of morbidity in the United States today is smoking. So, so you know, it, it's hard for me to talk about men's uh, health here without going over this, okay? Um, tobacco is still the number one cause of preventive uh, death, okay? Uh, but obesity is a close second, and it's, it's gaining ground. So... So here is um, a, another graph of the top causes of death in, in, in the U.S. Now, now you know, this, this um, is um, what, what causes death, but this is the actual uh, diseases. So, you know, smoking does cause heart disease and cancer. Okay, so, so, so this slide right here and, and, and this one, they're not mutually exclusive. Okay, so, so because mainly of the smoking, we have a higher incidence of, of both heart disease and cancer. Okay, so, but, you know, you can look at the, at the other causes of death, but they are not as great as the top two, which is heart disease and cancer. So, so let's go over these two things, both heart disease and cancer. So we'll, so we'll start with heart disease. So contributors to heart disease, like we talked about earlier, you know, we have smoking, that's, that's the, one of the number one contributors. Um, then, as you guys already know, you have high cholesterol, too, that can build up in your coronary arteries, uh, give you heart disease there. Um, obviously, age is a factor. You know, the older you are, the more likely you are to have cholesterol build up in your heart. Um, males, you know, this being Men's Awareness Month, males are more prone to heart disease than females. Um, obviously, a family history, if it runs in your family, um, you can have a genetic component to this as well. Um, high blood pressure. Um, it, it increased blood pressure increases the strain on your heart. Your, you know, your heart is a pump, so it has to, if it has to pump against all this higher pressure, um, it, you, you could have heart failure later. Um, diabetes, and then last of all, diet. So some things to consider, you know, we can't really change our sex, age, or family history. You know, that's, you know, that, you know, we, we start off life and, you know, that's a given. But we can decide to quit smoking, okay? So, so normally, um, I would discuss quitting smoking uh, during every single visit on, on all of my male, male patients who smoke. Sometimes it gets on their nerves, but, you know, I got to tell them you got to quit smoking every single visit. I harp on it, you know? Uh, we can still use, uh, lose weight, so I check, um, I check uh, my patients' weights on every single visit and, and uh, let them know about their BMI and uh, ways they can reduce it. You know, I check a cholesterol at least yearly, uh, sometimes every six months on, on, on my males. And then um, obviously if you've been to a doctor, you, they check your blood pressure every visit. So, so uh, that's part of the screening process as well. And then I check all my male patients for diabetes at least once a year. So then, you know, we keep an eye on these things to help prevent the number one and, and, and number two uh, causes of death in, in males. And, and, and here we go. So, so we talked about heart disease. Now let's talk about the, uh, the, the, the second cause of death, which is cancer. So here we have as well, so, so this is the biggest risk factors for cancer. And if you look at number one, you know, it's what we talked about before, uh, smoking. So, so tobacco over there is the number one cause of cancer. Um, now number two is obesity and being overweight. You know, a, a lot of people don't know this. They think being overweight just causes heart problems later in life, you know, high cholesterol and heart problems. But 
not many people know that obesity, believe it or not, is the second biggest risk factor for getting cancer. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you have diet, alcohol, um, occupational exposures, uh, environmental pollutants, but you know all of that stuff is not as big as the top two things we're looking at here. So, so now that we know that obesity is the you know is a contributor for both heart disease and it's the number, um, it's it's the second largest contributor to cancer. I have here a, a graph of the United States in 1990, in the year 2000, and in 2010. And um, if if you look at that, you can look at the the, you know, clearly you can see that the obesity trends, you know, every 10 years, they're they are increasing quite a bit. Um, I mean, if you look at 1990, it seems like everyone is skinny compared to 2010. Um, and, you know, it's, it's almost 2020, so I hate to see what the, what the next graph is going to look like. But, 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 but you can see here how the year 2000 is so much greater than 1990 there. So, you know, I, since, since obesity is such a large contributor to both cancer and heart, dis heart disease, you know, I talk about exercise and, and diet. Those are the number, I mean, those are two things that, that will make you lose weight. So I lost 20 pounds myself in about two months by, with, with just diet and exercise. So according to the literature, we recommend at least 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity exercise. So just brisk walking, you know, and we're not telling you to run a marathon here. Okay, and that's about 30 minutes a day, five times a week. And now this is at the bare minimum, you know. If, if you can do 30 minutes a day, uh, every day, that's great. An hour a day, every day, that's even better. And now, now for those of you who like uh, to go into the gym and doing strength training, uh, we, we recommend that you exercise all major muscle groups at least twice a week. And then, of course, diet control, you know. Uh, obesity is a factor of two things, calories in and calories out. So, so what affects your calories in? You know, exercise has nothing to do with the calories that come in. It's, it's all diet, you know. What, calories don't come out of thin air, you know. They come from, the, from what you put in, okay. So, so you have to um, be mindful about the calories you take in, and then the exercise will increase the amount of calories going out, okay. So as long as we have more calories going out than going in, you're going to lose weight. If you have more calories going in than going out, you're going to gain because those extra calories, they don't disappear. They have to go somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, so we talked about, you know, we, we, we talked about all of that stuff. Now let's talk about vaccinations. Um, it, it, vaccinations is an important part of uh, the health screening um, in, in, in both men and women, okay? But you need a tetanus shot every 10 years. If you accidentally get cut uh, somewhere, you, you, you want to be up to date in your tetanus shot. Okay. Later in life, you'll get a Tdap shot. Now, this is a tetanus shot mixed in with a vaccination for the whooping cough. Uh, during, you know, when we're kids, we get plenty of um, whooping cough vaccinations. But as we get older, our, our immunity starts to go down because the last uh, whooping cough vaccination we got was a long time ago. So. In, in elderly folk, I always give a Tdap to get them up to date in their whooping cough. And you know, if you're 50 or over, um, insurance will pay for a shingle shot, which will help you, which will help reduce the risk of getting shingles later in life. And I'd rather just get a shingle shot than get shingles. I mean, if you've ever had it, you know how painful it can be. Um, a yearly flu shot is very important too. And then, although last year the flu shot didn't seem to be as effective, but, but even though uh, you may get the flu, even after you got your flu shot, if you did get that flu shot, the flu will be uh, less intense. So you so you you might still get the flu after your flu shot, but it won't be as bad. Okay, and then um, you could also qualify for a pneumonia shot too, depending on your age and your medical condition. Now, um, so here is the good news: uh, one drink a day, okay, has actually been shown to reduce the risk of having a stroke. Okay. So, because it increases your good cholesterol. Now, now because, you know, it decreases platelet uh, clumping and it increases your good cholesterol, but now this, this effect is not true if you're an alcoholic, all right? <laughs> so, so, so one drink a day. So, you know. <laughs> uh, well, 
Uh, so one, one drink of an, any kind of alcohol, really. Uh, now, they say red wine because red wine also contains some antioxidants. That's also helpful. Okay. Now, now, a drink, you know, is uh, one shot of whiskey or, or, a, or a 12, you know, or a, what is it, 12 ounce uh, can of beer. A 40 ounce can of beer does not count as one drink. Yeah. So, so, um, so colon cancer screening, this, th this is important. Now, if you don't have any family history of colon cancer, you can get your colonoscopy starting at age 50 uh, every 10 years. But if you do have a family history of colon cancer, then um, you can qualify to get it a little bit earlier, um, at age 40 or 10 years before your family member was diagnosed, whichever comes first. Okay? And there are also some other tests uh, for colon cancer as well, but the colonoscopy is the main one. Now, uh, we can talk about prostate cancer screening. Now, you know, believe it or not, the guidelines have changed for this, okay? Uh, they no longer recommend routine PSA screenings for prostate cancer. Um, now, obviously, I, I do this on an individual basis. If they have a strong family history or if they have symptoms of prostate cancer, I would get it checked. But without a family history and without, you know, without any symptoms, uh, the recommendation has changed on this. So everyone doesn't just get a PSA anymore. So some other screenings. If you are between the age of 15 to 65, uh, you qualify for an, a one-time HIV test. Um, and now th you guys have probably seen the TV commercials on this one. You know, if, you were, if you're a baby boomer, basically, but the, if you're born between 1945 and 1965, you, you can also get a, you also need to be checked for hepatitis C. And, and I've actually diagnosed lots of folks with hep C, but you know, they weren't IV drug users, they had no, you know, they had no um, high risk behavior, but the problem was that they might have gotten some hospital uh, blood products or a blood transfusion or something like that between 1945 and 1965 and got it there. Back then, they didn't test for these kind of things. And so um, if, if you are between the ages of 55 and 80, and you've been smoking, you, and you have a 30-pack year history. 30-pack year history making, uh, meaning that suppose you smoke one pack a day and you've been doing it for 30 years. That's a 30-pack year history. Or if you smoke two packs a day and you've been doing it for 15 years, that's also a 30-pack year smoking history. Um, but if you have that smoking history and you've smoked within the past 15 years, if, you, if you're within that age range, you can qualify for a CT scan of your chest uh, to check for lung cancer. Um, and um, not many people have heard of this one, but if you're a male between the ages of 65 and 75 and you have ever smoked in your life, even if you smoked just a couple packs, you know, uh, 15 years ago or 20 years ago, you can qualify for a um, abdominal aortic aneurysm screening. And so, you know, uh, I, I tried to make this brief. There's a few more things I could, I could have gone over, but I didn't want to bore you guys. So, so do you guys have any questions for me? Mm-hmm. Between weight and cancer? Uh, do you mean to say why obesity causes cancer? Mm -hmm. so, so being obese um, increases the level of in inflammation, just a generalized level of inflammation in your body. And if you have uh, these increased inflammatory levels for a really long time, um, they, they can lead to cancer later in life. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people who are in the hospital because they're trying to lose this weight and that stuff. Like, what are some of the symptoms they have? So if you have, an, if you have prostate cancer, you could have blood in your urine. Okay. Um, you could have trouble urinating. You know, uh, you could have dribbling. You feel the need to go and you have to go to the bathroom more often. Uh, you could have weight loss. A prostate cancer lo loves to metastasize to the spine, so you could have back pain or, or other bone pains. Uh, th those, are s those are some of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Your prostate exam? Now, if, if they're having symptoms, I do a prostate exam. You know, if they're having, if, 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 
if they come to me and saying, you know, I have difficulty urinating, I dribble a lot, I have to go to the bathroom more often, I pee but I can't seem to completely empty, then, then, then they do a prostate. And then I do a prostate exam to see if their prostate is enlarged. But if they, but if they don't um, have, have, have any symptoms, then, you know, prostate cancer screening is, is not recommended for everybody. No other questions? All righty. Mm -hmm. They are following the old guidelines. Yeah, not uh, not everyone follows the latest and you know the latest information. But but now you know if you have a strong family history, if it runs in your family, if it runs in your genes, if you have symptoms, then you know it's okay to test for that. Mm -hmm. Now, now I think that's a more genetic component to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so the the pr the blood test is called the PSA. It's a prostate specific antigen. Okay. It it tests from it's a marker for prostate cancer in your blood. Now, when we do the digital rectal exam, okay, you, so your prostate is like a, a, a golf ball, okay, and, and, and it's up in there, and I, and I can feel this part of it by, by doing an exam, but I can't feel the whole thing, okay? I can only feel this part of it. So if there are nodules on the back, I, can't, I, I wouldn't be able to feel it. So if you have to be checked, I mean, if you have symptoms, I would just recommend that you get both the PSA and the prostate exam. Mm -hmm. how, how important is it uh, for early detection? Of, of what? Well, prostate cancer. How important is it early detection? I mean, you know, for years and years, I mean, is it detected, you know, uh, early? I mean, the old study, you have more likely to get it, you know. No. Now, you know, if, if, if you have it, obviously, as with any cancer, it's better if you detect it early, uh, preferably before it spreads. So then you can just get your prostate removed, and, and hopefully you don't have the cancer anymore. You know, if you, if you wait too long, I have a family member who, who actually did get it, but he was a smoker, you know. That was probably why he got it, because um, no one else in the family has it. But, but he, I mean, he smoked like a chimney. So, so, uh, but by the time he found out about it, he had the back pain and everything, and it went, it went to the spine and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm going to have to look up. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Um, the, the prostate is a gland uh, that, that produces some of the secretions, um, you know, during ejaculation and, and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, some, you know, sometimes you might have some urinary issues uh, because your your prostate is very close to your urethra. Okay, you might have some erectile dysfunction. It it, it depends on how the prostate was removed and what complications there were during the procedure. Now you know I've only been practicing for three years, wow. but but I've I've seen it in in, in people in their fifties. Mm -hmm. 
but a, a lot of folks have prostate cancer, you know, by the time they're 80, but they're not going to die from it. Okay, they're probably going to die from a heart attack. So, so if you, so if you are 75 years old and you have, and you have prostate cancer, you're, you know, you're still probably going to likely die of a heart attack than your prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very slow, you know, m most of, you know, now there are exceptions to the rule. Right. Mm -hmm. Man, everyone here seems to be more interested in prostate cancer than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so, going back to Paul and Teresa Brown, is it two or three things that you would probably call prevent prostate cancer? Well, you know, the number one thing, smoking. And um, obesity, and and that would be the the two main things, you know. Th I mean, those are the two main things that that cause cancer. You know, you saw my graph there. Mm -hmm. No, men men tend to get coronary artery disease and, and heart attacks more than women. Um, <coughs> other than that, it's all you know of, of of it's all lifestyle. You know, if if it's a it, a lifestyle of excess uh, causes problems. So we're talking about you know excess smoking, excess eating, excess drinking. You know, you you, you want to be lean. You, uh, you want to not smoke, you want to eat healthy, and you want to exercise. I mean, those are the number one things I can tell you. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's to prevent a stroke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Heart disease? Yeah. Well, the cancer is up there, you know, in, in, in women as well. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, women... Uh, I have a lot of women with heart disease. In fact, a few decades ago, heart disease was really prevalent in men. But now, since women are starting to become obese as well, they are also getting heart disease and heart failure, uh, very similar to men. So, so you know, as we get obese as a nation, um, a lot of the obesity-related uh, illnesses are catching up, even in the women. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for coming and um, spending your lunch with us.